Okay, so what do we got going on in this problem? Well, this is uh, pretty sophisticated mathematics that we're going to be doing in this video. And you can see I have some stuff down here. And uh, for those of you that, um, uh, you know, the title of this video caught your eye, you said, oh, yeah, I'm studying De Moore's theorem. It's likely, I would say probably 75% of you are in some sort of class, probably pre-calculus, okay? This is beyond a typical Algebra 2 course and uh, probably most college algebra courses. This is pretty uh, straightaway uh, pre-calculus level stuff, so pretty sophisticated mathematics. And if you um, are, you know, confused about De Moore's theorem, well, we're going to go ahead and tackle this problem here and just kind of, you know, review uh, the steps to apply De Moore's theorem. Now, I'm not going to get into everything um, that I'm going to be showing you here in this solution because there's a lot of sub-steps or a lot of skills that you need to have going into your study of De Moore's theorem. Okay, and De Moore's theorem, and this is kind of part of it. I'm going to explain. I'm going to show you the whole theorem here in a second. But uh, De Moore's theorem essentially allows us, it's an awesome theorem, here is a complex number, okay? So a complex number, uh, again, remember, A plus BI. Now, if I'm talking any of this stuff here and you're, like, totally confused and lost, well, you're probably not at this level of mathematics. But most of you should be pretty familiar with the complex number, like 2 plus 5I. This is a complex number. And then here... If I wanted to square this, I can just use the FOIL method and multiply this by itself and just do some basic algebra to get the answer. But if I wanted to take the eighth power of that, that means I'm going to have to take this thing and multiply it by itself eight times. That becomes a tremendous amount of work. So the Morris theorem allows us to take the power of complex numbers and the roots of complex numbers. Uh, and there's this, you know, I'm going to explain this how this works. But some of you might be saying, well, I don't need De Moore's theorem because I'll just go ahead and just multiply by this thing, uh, multiply by itself eight times. But what if I made this like 80? Okay, <laughs> the 80th power of this. Well, then you know most of you be like, okay, I give up. I'll learn De Moore's theorem, and that's pretty smart because if you're taking again this level of mathematics. Uh, you need to understand De Moore's theorem. It's very, very, very important because you, you need to understand how to take the powers and roots of uh, complex numbers. But we're going to focus on De Moore's theorem uh, with this particular example problem. Uh, and I'm going to get into this uh, step by step. Now, again, if you think um, you think you could do this, here's a little bit of a hint. This particular problem for most people probably would take at least five minutes to do uh, very focused work. Uh, five to even 10 minutes. So if you want to go ahead and challenge yourself because you're learning this and just want to see if you can get it right, go ahead and, uh, you know, do so. I'm going to show you the solution here in a second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you are studying middle school, high school, even college level mathematics, I can help you uh, pass your course. Uh, this stuff here that we're talking about, De Moore's theorem, would all be in my pre-calculus course. Uh, for, so these, for those of you out there that are, are possibly taking some sort of exam that has math on it, so for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace or Alex exam, CLEP exam, a teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, I have very comprehensive homeschool math curriculum. And uh, for those of you that don't have notes, uh, I'm going to leave links to my uh, notes in the description of this video. But hopefully you have great outstanding math notes. You cannot uh, pass this level of mathematics or do well in any level of math without taking excellent notes. So start taking notes and everything will get a lot better. But uh, we're going to get into De Moore's theorem right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and just review basically what De Moore's theorem is. So it says, I'll read it and then I'll explain it to you. It says, if z is equal to r cosine theta plus i sine theta is a complex number and n is any positive integer, then uh, z to the n is equal r to the n cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. So uh, if you're new to this, you know, you're probably a lot of you are going to be like, what is this? You know, this is crazy math. Well, listen, again, this particular video is uh, more targeted to those of you that are already studying uh, this topic. But if you just like, you know, are interested in this and this is the first time you're learning this, well, stick around. I think, um, you know, you'll pick up on some of the concepts here that you uh, might be um, taking next. Maybe you're Algebra 2 and you just want to see a little bit 
of uh, the math that's right around the corner. All right, so what are we talking about here? Okay, well, here's the thing. Z, okay, represents some sort of complex number. So let's say Z is our complex number like this, 2 plus 3i. But this complex number is an A plus B I form. Okay, we call this kind of standard or rectangular form. So uh, we can't use the uh, De Morph's theorem uh, when a complex number is written in this form. Okay, so we have this complex number. Let's take this uh, uh, particular complex number um, as an example: two plus three i. What we need to do is to write this into what we call trigonometric or polar form, okay? This right here is a um, pretty involved process in and of itself, okay? And this is the thing I'm not going to get into and cover. You need to know, in order to do De Morris theorem, you need to know how to uh, take complex numbers and write them into trigonometric and polar form. So if this is the part of the theorem that's troubling you, then I'll, I'll try to do some additional videos on uh, some example problems, but I would uh, strongly suggest that you check out my pre-calculus course because I get into all this really thoroughly, okay? And this can be complicated and confusing, especially when you're asked to do these problems without a calculator. So first things first, if we have a complex number that's not in trigonometric form, like this particular example, let me just go up here real quick. Here, this is not in polar or trigonometric form. This is in rectangular or A plus B I form. So I can't do this problem yet. I can't take the eighth power of this complex number Z uh, until I put this into trigonometric or uh, polar form. So again, uh, you should have your math notes. And if you want to, you know, pause the video and go ahead and see if you can do that, then, you know, pursue, um, you know, see if you can get the right answer. So the bottom line with De Morf's theorem here is that Z, our complex number, uh, it has to be in trigonometric form, and that's R cosine theta plus I sine theta, or sometimes it's R C I S. Well, it's all the same thing, but um, this should be familiar uh, to you if you expect to understand De Morf's theorem. Okay, so once we have this complex number and it's expressed in trigonometric or polar form, then we just go ahead and follow this. Uh, uh, formula right here, okay, our complex number to the nth power. So here in this particular problem, we have some sort of complex number, uh, and we're going to be taking it to the eighth power. And so we would just go ahead and plug in the respective values into this particular uh, formula, okay? So let's go ahead and get to it. That is De Moore's theorem. Again, if this is the first time you're trying to understand De Moore's theorem, this is probably not going to cut it as a full comprehensive lesson. Um, again, at least as far as my teaching goes, you might want to check out my pre-calculus course. But let's get to the actual problem. All right, so here is the problem. Here's our complex number. It's an A plus B I form, okay, rectangular form. But I want to take this complex number to the eighth power. Okay, well, first things first, I need to express this into trigonometric or polar form. All right, so our complex number Z, and here it is right here, negative square root of 3 plus I is equal to 2 times cosine 150 degrees plus I sine 150 degrees. This right here, this complex number, this is the equivalent, um, uh, this is the complex number expressed in trigonometric or polar form. Okay, so to go from here to here is a whole lesson in and of itself. So if you don't know how to do this, a lot of students struggle with this part of it. They can't, you know, they struggle with taking a, a complex number that's in a rectangular form and putting it in to a uh, polar form. If you can't do that, well, then it's, you know, uh, it's game over in terms of solving this problem because we have to have this complex number written or expressed in this way. And of course, I'm using degrees, not radians, but sometimes you, you, you certainly could use radians to express your degrees. Okay, so again, I'm not showing you the steps here uh, to do this. That's a whole, you know, that this requires a decent amount of, well, not too much amount of work, but a decent amount of work to go from here to here. Just know that this is the case. All right, so let's take it up from this point. So our complex number Z, if we take it to some power, we're going to be taking uh, this particular complex number to the eighth power, okay? Whatever it is, though, our complex number Z to the nth power is R, which is the radius, okay? In this case, that's 2, all right, right here. 
And when you have a complex number, let me just go back here. All right. So let's review. And uh, Morphs theorem, R cosine theta plus uh, I sine theta. This is uh, the radius. This is the angle. Again, if this is all confusing for you, you don't even know what this means, then you're not going to understand what we're talking about here. But I just want to make sure that you, you know, um, are, are, you know, be, being able to stay with me as I explain this problem. All right. So R to the nth power. Okay, in this case, that's going to be two cosine. Okay. N is our power. In this case, it's going to be eight times the angle plus I sine N times the angle. All right. So let's go ahead and get to it. Here's our complex number Z. Okay. We already discussed that. Here it is. This is uh, the number expressed in trigonometric form. So that's 2 cosine 150 degrees plus I sine 150 degrees. Okay, so now let's go ahead and apply De Morve's theorem. So this is De Morve's theorem. Here's our complex number Z. We're just going to basically follow uh, the you know formula here. So Z, our complex number to the eighth power, is 2 to the eighth. That's R to the N. Okay, remember N, this is N, whatever power we're taking it uh, to. Okay, that is a positive uh, integer, so 8 here is n for this particular prompt. So that's 2 to the 8th power cosine n. Okay, remember this is De Morphe's theorem, n times the angle. So that's going to be 8 times 150 degrees, 8 times 150, plus i sine n, which is again um, 8 times 150 degrees. So here is the setup. Okay, so if you understand this, then that's excellent. Um, at least you got the setup correctly, but this is a good amount of work just to get to this point, right? We had to go, we had to take the complex number, put it into a trigonometric form, and then we had to plug it into De Morphe's theorem. Now we're about, we're, um, about ready to start the rest of the problem. Now, this particular problem, um, for those of you who are taking, let's say, pre-calculus, your teacher can easily say, do this problem without the aid of a calculator. If you were in my course, I'd say, put your calculator away, show me what you uh, know about trigonometry up to this point. But sometimes you'll um, you'll have to do problems with your calculator or without your calculator. But this particular one would be a problem that you could do without your calculator. So again, you know, it's a lot of work. All right, so um, let's go ahead and uh, do the, uh, the actual um, work here, okay? The number crunching. So 2 to the 8th is 256 cosine. 8 times 150 degrees, that's 1,200 degrees. I sign 8 times 150, 1,200 degrees. Okay, so 1,200 degrees, if you uh, looked at the unit circle, that's 360, that's 720, it's going round robin. Uh, you would end up with a, at 120 degrees as the reference angle, or 1,200 degrees is the same as 120 degrees. This is how to evaluate trigonometric um, angles. So again, De Morse theorem, requires your understanding for a lot of things you've been studying in trigonometry. Okay, if you don't know how to evaluate uh, um, uh, angles, okay, uh, without the aid of a calculator, if you don't understand how to take a complex uh, number and put it into trigonometric form, all those different things, you're not going to be able to handle De Morve's theorem uh, problems. But anyways, 1,200 degrees is if we if we find the answer of cosine 120 degrees, it's equivalent of finding the answer of cosine 1,200 degrees. So we have 256 times cosine 120 plus I assign 120 degrees. Okay, so moving on. So this right here was a bit of, uh, of amount of work. So on cosine 120 degrees and sine 120 degrees, you're going to have to build a little reference triangle. Here is our initial side. You're going to have to figure out uh, this is 90. You're going to have to figure out the terminal side. You're going to have to evaluate. Again, this if I try to teach you all of this, this video would go like 30 minutes. And I, I'm trying to kind of uh, focus on the De Morves theorem application. So if you are if you can't tell me with cosine 120 deg uh, degrees and why it's equal to negative one half, right? If you can't do this right here, cosine 120 degrees is equal to negative one half, then you're going to have to review that part of trigonometry. Okay, so... Uh, when students struggle with De Morphe's theorems, it could be all number. There's a lot of different reasons why, okay, because they're, you're using a lot of different skills here. All right, so uh, cosine 120 degrees is equal to negative one half. Again, you're not using your calculator for this particular problem. You could you plug it in uh, 120 degrees into your calculator and you'd get negative 0.5. 
but that you know you don't want to, you just don't want to do that okay you want to see you can actually do this without a calculator all right so sine 120 degrees is square root of 3 over 2 okay so here we just figured out what cosine 120 degrees is and sine 120 degrees is so we're going to go ahead and plug in and substitute uh, these values in for those values and this is what we got all right, so again, 256, cosine 120 degrees, that's a negative one half. Uh, sine 120 degrees, that's square root of three over two. So I have 256 times this. I'm just gonna go ahead and distribute that 256 uh, into negative one half and square root of three over two times i, and you get negative 128 plus 128 i square root of three. That is the answer. Okay, so let's just uh, kind of come full circle. Our original problem was the square root of 3 plus i to the 8th power. Okay, this is our complex number, a plus bi in um, rectangular form. We're taking that to the 8th power. And here, our answer is in a plus b um, i form, in rectangular form. Now, if your teacher was really mean, they could say, take, you know, find the answer in trigonometric form. Okay, and you'd be like, oh, no, I'm going to have to go backwards. No, no, you actually had it right up here. Okay, so this is the answer in a trigonometric form, but we put it back into rectangular form. So you, you're going to be asked all different sort of aspects, and, you know, like, you got to be very, very careful on what your teacher's asking. Um, sometimes they'll give you their complex number uh, already in trigonometric form, but more often than not, you're going to get it in rectangular form. You're going to have to put that into trigonometric form, and then you're going to go ahead and apply Morphs theorem. Now, if you got this uh, problem right, then I must give you an awesome happy face with the good old 1985 Mohawk with extra Aquanet hairspray, A+. Plus. I'm going to give you several stars because this is a lot of stuff and 100%. You know, you're doing really, really good. If you're able to do this, then you're definitely on uh, the right track and you, you're uh, showing me that you know a lot of subskills in trigonometry. Okay, so De Moore's theorem is one of these type of uh, uh, topics in pre-calculus that you have to use a lot of the things that you've already been learning. So, um, but anyways, if you got this right, excellent. If you kind of like understand De Moore's theorem a little bit better from this, then that's the whole idea of this video. And if that is the case, please consider smashing that like button. If you watch this video and you're still lost, listen, I get that as well. You're going to need um, additional help. I don't have, I don't think I have too many uh, videos in my pre-calculus playlist on my YouTube channel, but I do have some things in there that can help you out. I would strongly recommend uh, you checking out my pre-calculus course to really, you know, really thoroughly understand this and all the other topics in pre-calculus. But uh, nevertheless, check out my YouTube channel and um, hopefully you'll become a subscriber. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics. So uh, please take advantage of that content. And I'm posting new stuff all the time. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.